Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at Power Virtual Agents Ask with Adaptive Card feature. And this feature is part of the whole set of releases that I've emphasized on my video last week. So in the chatbot that I have, it is where I go ahead and put in an order. And once I trigger it, a form shows up. And in that form, I can go ahead and get in the first name, last name, email address, important things, especially this is an external bot. And then you can click a button. If you see in the next form, it picked up the first name from the previous form. And this form has drop down options that you can go and select from. So I go and select the entree, the side, a side drink. And then after that, I go and click another button. And then once this part is done, it goes ahead and triggers a flow and sends me an email. So stick around because starting this video, I'm gonna start teaching you how to add those wow factors into your chatbot by adding these enhanced features. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. I'm in the correct environment and I'm gonna go and now click on the plus new chatbot. And for this, I'll go ahead and give it a good name. I'm gonna call it as a quick and easy order bot. The language is in English, which is good. I don't have anything to boost the conversation right now. I'll go and click on the edit, edit, edit advanced options. Um, since this is to order food, I like this icon instead, the one which looks like a bag. So I'm gonna select that one. Uh, solutions is all good, schema name is good. So I'll go and click on create. Um, and as you can see, I have one of my favorite things. I even mentioned about that in my video last week, which was showing about all the features, that this is one of those new features that I really like, the new animation that has come in when the bot is being created. Uh, my personal favorite, again, is it a big deal? Not so much, but I like the nice taste. So now we are inside this new bot, and just to confirm, it is called as the quick and easy order bot. And over here on the bottom, you can see it has now the icon. So we are all set as far as the overall creation of the bot. Now let's jump in and click on the new topics or create the new topics. So for now, I'll just go and click on this closed test bot because we are going to go and hide the testing one. I'll go and click on topics. And if this is going to be a creation of a production one, it is always a good practice to go ahead and now toggle off these lessons. And you can go and toggle them all off at a time. It will tell you on the top in this little text that, hey, it is actually turned off, uh, but you've got the option to go and turn it off. So for my new topic, I'm gonna to click on the drop down. I'm gonna select from blank because I don't have any examples to go and pick from. Uh, and then over here, make sure that you go and give it a name. I'm gonna say ask with adaptive cards because that's the whole example that I'm gonna show over here. Uh, and for the triggers, again, for the sake of this example, I'm at least, at least gonna give one trigger that it will go ahead and you know, take effect. Uh, so my trigger one, I'm gonna go and call that as order. Uh, you can go ahead and say you know dinner or lunch or take out, you know, whatever you think. I'm most for the example, I'll be using the term order, but at least go and add something. Um, I'm gonna at least go and save it. So the whole process has begun. Um, next, I'll go and click on the plus again, and I'll go and say send a message. And in the message, at least go and add something. This is, hi, I'm your friendly neighborhood order bot. Uh, let me get some information from you to complete this order quickly. Again, just a quick little message that I wanna go and give. Uh, so I went ahead and added that message. And then from now, we're gonna go and start using the adaptive cards. So here we go, click on the plus for the new node and I'm going to go and select now the ask with adaptive card. And when I do this, it goes ahead and drops this adaptive card, but it also on the right where the properties are, it gives me the link to open adaptive card designer, a beautiful tool, which we are gonna leverage right now. So I'll click on this one and on the top right, as you can see, or on the top, it actually shows me this new tab that has opened up uh, and it gives me an example over here. But what we're gonna do is now we're gonna create one from scratch. So I'm gonna click on this new card and on the new card, it gives you a couple of these options that you already have, which is neat. So you can always go and scroll down to see okay, which one of these do I really need, how useful it is and all of this information. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and actually intentionally use this application login. Now our purpose is not truly logging in, but this is closest to what I want and we'll tweak it as we go along. So for right now, I'm gonna go and select this one, all right? Um, now when I go and select it, it already goes me, it gives me a preview of what it is and it also shows me what the whole um, code is behind it, okay? Simple code that we will work with, easy to go ahead and go just tweaking around. 
That's what I'm going to show you. So first of all, a couple of things I immediately want to do is this application name. You see, this application is basically each of these are called as containers. You know how in Power Apps Canvas app we have controls over there. We go and drop all of these different labels, tags, galleries, all of those same similar type of concept over here. It's all part of these containers. And in the containers, you drop all of these cards and their different elements. So this one for application logic, it is basically just a simple text. Now, if you come to the right where the properties are, this text for this example is actually coming in from somewhere else. So I'm going to actually replace that and say something in effect. So this is going to be full name and email. And so moment I changed it on the right side, you see that in the preview, it is actually going and doing that. So now that you know that, okay, this thing needs to basically have full name and email. Now I'll just pause away and say that one of the things we can achieve over here is to get the first name and the last name because in Power Ads, remember how it have those um, entities which will go ahead and identify they are smart enough to know what your full name is. Uh, but over there, it picks up your full name. What I want over here is the breakdown of what is your first and the last name. So I'm going to show that as an example. So first things first is this username. I'm going to change the username to calling it as the first name, all right? So I type in first name on the right in the label. You can see that change getting reflected over here on the left side. Uh, but just to be a full, you know, secure way, I also want to go and change its ID. So the ID was called as a user val. What I'm going to go and do is change it into the first name var because var stands for variable. That's just something I practice with. I always go in and put var somewhere in the end or in the beginning of that name or post or pre, but put it that in. Okay. So this is my practice. I'm putting it as var. If you're fine with the term val, go ahead and use that. So we got the first name. I'm going to go and put in the password for the password. Again, this is not a password. This is going to be the last name and then the ID. Well, I'll go ahead and change that as the last name var. And so far we're looking good, but, but if we do a preview mode test, um, in the preview mode, one of the things is if you select it, it gets highlighted. And then over here, I can't click on anything to actually see the properties because we are in the preview mode. So in the preview, now if I do first name Daniel, if I go and do it in the last name and I start typing in Christian, it doesn't show me that. Why? Because that was originally designed as a password. So we got to go and change that a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll go and uncheck this preview mode. I'll go and select this last name. And on the right side where there's the properties for the style, it shows not set. If you go and change that to text, and then if you go and do another preview text, if I go and now come in here to the test and actually start typing it in, now you can see that you're actually able to see that test. So that's a little minor change that we had to make. But remember, now we got to go ahead and actually even get a copy of the name itself because this is going to be first name, last name, and then we also need email address. And so for that, it is going to be the input text. So I'll grab it, drag it, and I'm going to drop it right in the bottom on the side. So when you can see, this is going to be the placeholder for that password, but I need to make a few changes. Remember, for the previous ones on the top, if you see on the right, for example, the last name uh, in the label is where we had to go ahead and actually add the last name. So the same thing happens over here as well. In the label, if you now go ahead and type in email address, it automatically goes and puts in that label name. Point being that you don't need to go ahead and grab this text block and put it over there. It by default comes with the input text element. You just got to go ahead to the right side on the properties and where it says label, go ahead and put in that label information. While we're in the properties for the ID, go ahead and call this as the email var. So we've got that placeholder. And then on the side, on the bottom, you can actually go ahead and put in some more information. We'll leave this over here for now. While you're here, though, I want to change a few things. So check this out. On the first name, we put in, you know, by default, the first name for the var. But if I scroll to the bottom, if for some reason somebody kept that as blank and it showed up as an error, we got to change that error as well. So it's going to be first name is required. Oops, I got a little typo there. The first name is required. So I've added that. For the last name, we go ahead and do the exact same. It says password is required. Why does it password? Because remember, it originally said password and we changed that. So I'll go and change the error name now to last name is required. Um, and then we've got this part, which is all good. So email address is good. You know, we've got the section in the placeholder text for the email address, but it says placeholder text. That's actually a placeholder on the right side. I'll go ahead and take that out. So we'll leave that as blank. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is this button. It's got the comps, uh, name called login. I'm going to go and change the login to submit. All right. 
So I pretty much like everything that I see over here. I'm gonna leave it all. Now I'm gonna show you how we can actually go ahead and copy this code off and go ahead and paste it directly into our chatbot. And to do that, you don't have to do, you know, come on the side where the where is the card placeholder editor and go and highlight that. No, you don't have to go and do it. Can you do it that way? Sure. Easy way is on this adaptive cards designer section. Right on the top it says copy card payload. Go ahead and just copy that. Now it has gone and put it in your temporary copying space. We switch tabs, we go back over here to our Power Virtual Agents topic. And in this section, which is already highlighted as the adaptive card, on the right it is on the edit JSON. Leave it there as is. But on this section, we see that expand one, click on it. And it will go ahead and now give you a much wider way to work on this code that we're just gonna copy in, all right? So I'll go and highlight this off. So I'm gonna delete it and I'll go and do a paste. Now, you and I are watching for something because if you start seeing these red color squiggly lines, and I'll show you what that means. Watch, if I take this bracket just off, if I take that off and if I scroll all the way to the top, take the bracket off, and if I come over here, you see that red color squiggly line shows basically an unexpected error. And that's what I'm saying is that if you go ahead and put this in properly, you should not see any of the squiggly lines, which means the copying from how it is directly from the adaptive cards designer section you copy that as is by doing the copy card payload you literally come back into the power virtual agents select the edit section over here replace everything not just like you know putting it and finding that no just delete everything paste it in you've actually got your entire uh, form that you made using the uh, adaptive cards and placed over here but the beauty besides the fact that you've got the form, is it automatically goes ahead and puts in the variables as well. So then remember, the email variable, the first name variable, the last name variable, you know the ones that I advised you to go ahead and put this in correctly in the adaptive cards? That translates over directly into the Power Virtual Agents. And this is the beauty and this is why it is worth it to go ahead and start leveraging this type of adaptive cards because the output section was automatically done. I didn't pause my video or I didn't do anything magic in the back end. No, you just saw me copy the JSON code that we had from the adaptive card right here, pasted it in, but this adaptive card control is so much powerful and so enhanced that it directly goes and puts in these outputs over here. And this is pretty neat. I like how it is. We're gonna go ahead and now save the bot because remember, after this, we need to go ahead and add another adaptive card. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down a little bit because I need to add a new node. I'll go ahead and click this section for the output so it basically goes ahead and shrinks this first adaptive card. Uh, but I'll go ahead and click on the plus to add a new node. And now we're gonna add the second adaptive card, which is ask again with adaptive card. Uh, you know this process. We've got ahead and actually go and get now the adaptive card program, uh, the code. Um, it's, I can click on this open adaptive card designer um, or I can go ahead back to the additional one. Uh, just one tip over here is that if you're going to go ahead and save or reuse this, uh, go ahead and copy this somewhere. So basically, for example, you can go ahead and copy this payload. Um, I can go to my notepad plus plus. I can go ahead and paste it in. I like notepad plus plus because it actually keeps the code format. And then from here, you can go and save it so you can leverage it again in the future, right? Just that's important thing that if you do come then coming and actually starting to change this a little bit more, um, you can go ahead and actually do it directly in the node. All right, so let's go ahead and now create a new adaptive card. So I'll click on the plus for add a new node, select the ask with adaptive card again, and on the run side selected, on the right, the property section comes up. I'll click on the open adaptive card designer. It just goes and opens up another tab. Um, on the right side, we had the original one, but we were using it, we might still have to tweak it. So I left that one as is, and it now creates another tab. I'm gonna go and select on a plus new card, which is a new card. And over here, the one that is very similar for us to put in an order is this one right over here, which is the malt and the wine order one, all right? So I'm gonna select that, we'll go tweak it, but I'm gonna go select that first. So I'm gonna select it, and then right off the bat, it's basically showing me a bunch of things that I would like, but I want you to just, just, just a bit, and I'm gonna tweak the code a whole bunch, but I just wanna show you that right now. Right now as is, in order for you to see what it is, it is showing you the text. So for the text right now, it's saying the form info title. This is the one that's coming up on the top over here. Then you see the question number one, which is zero, one and two. That's basically how the questions are coming in. And on the right side for each of the questions, it says, which entree would you like? Um, that's basically the first one. It shows the drop down, and all of these things are happening, right? So that's basically what I'm showing it to you. But if you just ignore even going ahead and reviewing all of this code, and you just create it just the way I showed you, selected it, it shows up over here. And if you don't go and do a copy card payload, 
come back into our Power Virtual Agents topic, one which we have new one that we created for the adaptive card, go ahead and just get this expanded version. Go ahead and delete the existing ones that we have the code and just do a control V to paste it all in. We don't see any squiggly lines, so I'm actually pretty confident. And now when I go and see it, you see it all just came in. And in fact, if I go and now even see the click on the drop down, it's not showing it completely, but the drop downs are coming in as well. So if you just take a look at the code, um, it actually works really well. Cause you see right on the top, it put me that it's, it's a type of a text and it went and grabbed the text directly. But on the coding side, that text was actually the info form on that side. So this is what you see on the payload editor, but it's actually including the sample data editor. That's the one that you are copying for the card payload. So you're pulling actually this data, which is really good because now it's easier to tweak it in because now I don't have to worry about what the variables were or anything like that. I just gotta go and tweak it in. So all of this I like, I just wanna call out a few things is that you see for the first question, which is and it is asked, which which entree would you like? Over here, it was going to say steak, chicken, tofu, and those are the two ones. The title is that, but the value is one. It is the value that comes up when you are using those variables. So for example, the first variable that you're gonna go and get is the drink variable, okay? If it's bar, we'll go and change that, but it's a drink variable. So for the drink variables, we've got some drink options on the bottom. There is water, soft food, uh, soft drink, coke, uh, coffee, so on and so forth. If I selected, say, soft drink, I would expect the value to actually be soft drink, but it actually goes and saves the number two. So what we need to do just to be super careful is actually change these numbers all the way up to what we see as the actual title. So I'm gonna change one now to steak. I'm gonna go ahead and change chicken, uh, the number two to chicken right there. And then I'll go and change the uh, the number uh, three, I'll go ahead and add in tofu. And that way I'm at least going in and getting all my information in. So I went and did that for the first question, which is your, you know, what entree would you like? I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other questions as well. So same here, baked potato, there is a space in between, that's completely fine. Remember it's already inside double quotes, so you're fine. So I'm gonna replace that one with baked potato. For the title, I'm gonna replace rice uh, I'm gonna replace the number two with rice. I'll replace the number uh, three with vegetables. I'll go ahead and replace the number four with noodles. And I've got one more other question to go ahead and work on the bottom. And that is basically what drink would you like? So I'm gonna go and replace the water. I mean the number one with water. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the number two with soft drink. And then I'll go ahead and replace the number uh, three with coffee, all right? I think I have one more in the bottom, natural, uh, two more in the bottom. Let's go change those two, the number four natural juice, and then number uh, five, no drink, all right? I can keep that as is. And all of this is pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and now click on this one. At least the data's coming in, no errors, so let's at least go and save it, so that even our, the JSON you know, code that we've put in over there, uh, that will actually go ahead and get saved over here as is. And then we are able to go ahead and now see it. So if I, for example, okay, if I just go ahead and actually do a, um, a test, so in the test, I'm coming in and one of my items for the uh, uh, triggers, I just went and put in as order. So I'll go and say order, put that in. The first thing comes in and that it is that it's going to go in and say, hey, I'm your friendly uh, you know, neighborhood Autobot. What is it you want over here? Uh, I'm gonna go and say Dan, uh, Daniel. I'm gonna go and say Christian. I'll go and give in my email address for now. Um, at I'll go and click on submit. Beautiful thing over here, you see the next one came in, but that submit button, once you selected it, it gets highlighted with a new color. And what that new color also shows is that you can't go ahead and click on it again. Because if for some reason you had that ability, it would really throw off the bot because then the bot would be confused as to which node it is in. So that's the beauty of this out of the box in the adaptive card form is that you click on it once, it went and grabbed all the information, but it doesn't let you do it again. What it did is went directly to the next node. So here now, I've got the drop down, which is perfect. And now, um, which is, which entry would you like? I think I'm gonna do steak. Uh, which side would you do? I think I'm gonna do some baked potatoes. What drink would you like? I do like a natural juice. And then I'll go ahead and place this order as well. And so that section basically got completed. So it is working. What I'm gonna show you is that now that we've gone ahead and pulled this information, uh, how do we tweak it? So let me give you an example first, all right? So I'm gonna actually go and change this title a little bit. And in this title, I'm gonna go ahead and leverage a variable from the previous form. That really shows how we can tweak this adaptive card a bit. So let's try that, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is go ahead and refresh this one completely. And then I'm going to come on the right where the adaptive card is. The moment I select on that side, I can go and select on this properties. Uh, the properties fly out and I'll go and expand it so we see all of this information. All right. So over here now, I want to go ahead and start coding this a little bit. I want to go and add our information. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, just to be on the safe side, go ahead and highlight the entire thing. So I did a control all, I do a control C. I'll go ahead and grab uh, my uh, notepad plus plus. I'll open up another one and I'll just go ahead and put a paste away so we don't lose any of the code. I'll go ahead and bring that down again. And then here, you see that edit JSON, click on that one and change it to formula. Now, here is where some interesting things happen. First of all, we are getting that everything is actually pretty good on the bottom, which is all nice. No worries, nothing has to be changed because if they didn't like it, it would actually not, I mean, it would tell you that there's a whole bunch of errors. So this is really good. But what I do want to do is put in some other information. What information is, doing is I want is I want to say something like hi and the first name we got from the previous node. So let's go try that. So on the actual body where right, it says the malt and wine order form right over here, I'm going to open up another double quotes and I'm going to say hi. All right. And I'll go ahead and do, close the quotes. Then remember how we did this in power canvas app by appending text. What did we do? We added the ampersand. There you go. You remember. So I'm going to go do the exact same thing. Add the ampersand over here and then go ahead and close it with another ampersand so that now in between we can go ahead and add the variable. So what is the name? How do I go and get that variable? Now, in Power Virtual Agents, when you go ahead and create a variable like the one that just automatically created, it is a topic variable, which means all you have to do is type in this prefix topic and then go ahead and type in the first name bar. And moment you do it that way, and if you've got the variable correct, the error directly goes off directly like that. And it actually goes and puts everything nicely. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure I have enough spaces. So there is the high explanation. I'll put a space and then it gives me my name. And then after that, I'll go and put in, a, in, in the second card, uh, second text, I'll put a comma and I'll put another space. And then here I can go ahead and change in my name. So I'm going to just say, you know, quick order form. All right. I'll just put something like that because I'm not really ordering malt and things like that. I'm going to just go and do this. But here's the beauty. OK, I'm going to go ahead and now close out of this one uh, right there. And in the form, we will actually well, let's also go and do a save. Um, we will go and test it. Now, I think you've already noticed something is that see this section on the top, this adaptive card. Uh, we didn't make any changes to it. In fact, we even kept it in the direct formula as is uh, in the edit JSON. And so it's showing us the form. In the one on the bottom, we actually went and did a few things. We first of all changed it from the edit JSON to the edit formula, uh, which means now the whole thing looks like a one big, you know, power FX formula. Uh, but we actually tweaked it. And because we tweaked it, the preview went away. All right. So hopefully there will be some improvements to this in the future where the preview will stay as is. But for right now, the best way to identify this works is go and do a test. So here's what we're going to do. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to basically put in one of the triggers that, will, that I have put in, which is order. So I'll put in the order and now the bot is going to go and start with the discussion. So I'll go and put in the first name, Daniel. I'll go and put in the last name and I'll go and say daniel.christian at the contoso.com. Go and click on submit. Now remember, for the second form, we should see my first name showing up. So I'll click on submit and there you go. Hi, Daniel, quick order form. All right, there you go. So showed you that now we are able to leverage the variables from that adaptive card in the previous node and leverage that in the second one. This is the beauty of the adaptive card because now we are using a custom made form directly into the conversation to get exactly the information that you want in this dialogue that is going on. And beautiful things, drop downs, because I can go and say, which entree would you like? Well, I, like I said, I, the, previously I did a steak. I'm going to do a chicken. Previously, I went and did baked potatoes. I'm going to do rice. Previously, I went and did natural juice. Today, I'll just do a soft drink, place the order, and it's completed. So you just saw me create a topic with two adaptive cards, and it has automatically gone ahead and created these variables for us. So the last step over here is now to go ahead and use Power Automate, which will send that email notification. And to that Power Automate, we are going to send these variables. So let's go do that piece. So I'll come now, I'll go and close X this out of this over here. I'll go ahead and actually hide the bot and I'll go and click on the plus. And on the plus, I'm going to now go a little bit to the bottom and click on the call and action. And in the call and action, I'm going to select create a flow. Another tab opens up, directly takes me into Power Automate and makes sure that I am already in the same environment and already added the trigger and the end directly in the flow. So make sure that you give it that name. So I'm going to say um, PVA 
lunch order email notification, all right? I'll just put that in. Remember that we even put that in. And so here now, I need, what is all the information I need? I need the first name, I need the last name, I need the email address, and then I need all of those things, which is the main dish, the side dish, and the order that it put in. What I want to do is make sure that I at least line up with the variables that I have, right? So at least keep it a little bit similar. So the first thing over here that I'm going for the power virtual agents, it is basically in power automate. So what for my, this variables prefix, I'm gonna say PA, say first name, and I'm gonna put that as var. So that way I know that this is how happening in Power Automate. It's asking for the first name variable, all right? Making a little sense? Now you come up with whatever works for you, but this is what works for me. So now same thing over here, I'm with Power Automate. I'm gonna say last name var. And then after that, the Power Automate, it is going to be, it is going to be PA, and I'm gonna put that as entree var. Next thing, another text, it is going to be P A, this is going to be a side bar. And then finally, I've got the P A uh, drink, P A drink bar, all right? Oh, and let's not forget our email address because we will need that email address. So for that one, I'm gonna highlight this. And input five, I'm gonna call it P -A -E -P -A. I'm gonna say email and I'm gonna put that as bar, all right? So I think we've got everything that we need over here. Um, so I'm gonna click on the plus. And now I want to go and send out that email notification. So for my email notification, I'm going to go ahead and use the Office 365 Outlook connector. So I'll select that, and then it's going to be the send action. So I'll just type in send, and there you go. Send an email version two, click on that one. And then here I need now to go ahead and get that email var which we just got. So it's clicking inside two, on the top you see the thing for switch to advanced mode. When I click on it, it basically gives me the information. And see it's already smart enough. It says, okay, this thing has got the term email, which means that's basically what you need. I, I love the way that it at least you know gives you uh, what you potentially need. Granted, I can click on it, see more and it gives me all of them, but email is the best fit. And so here I'm going to go and say something in effect that your um, order submitted you know, by, and I'll go and say first space, last name, all right? And then after this, I can go and put in something else. It's like, you know, hi, and then I'll go and put in Daniel, comma, you know, your order has been submitted. Here is what you ordered, all right? I'll put that, and then here we're gonna, we're gonna say the uh, entree, uh, put the colon, enter, I'll go, and basically I'm just putting in some text, uh, side, colon, enter, and then I also went and put in the drink, colon, enter. You can go ahead and jazz up the text because remember this part is all rich text. So you can go ahead and jazz this up however you want. Um, you know, I'll just do it something simple like that just to give you an example. Uh, you don't really have to do this, but you can have the flexibility as well. So I'll go and do that. Now in the entree section, I need to go and put in the PA entree bar, which is the variable. For the side, again, you guessed it, PA side variable, drink, Again, you go and rest it. I'll go ahead and actually put in the drink bar. So the email part is actually done. Now, I don't need to return any variables to it because all this thing was doing was sending enough. Now, I can take this to the next level by saying, hey, was that email successfully sent? If it is yes, then I can go and put in as a true or a false. You get the idea, but for the sake of this demo, we are accomplishing one thing, getting the variables and sending the data, that's all. So I'll go and click on this save right now, all right? And there you go. The flow is ready to go, which means it is already saved. So I'll keep this as is, this tab as is. Let's go back to our Power Virtual Agents. And over here, I'm gonna say done because it just said you open a new tab to, tab to create a new flow. I get it, I went and created the flow, so I'm gonna click on done. After I click on done, here now, I am going to now call that action again. And in the call to action, remember what the name was. It says PVA lunch order email notification, but below that it says updated a few seconds ago. So we kind of are very confident based on those two tips, the name and this update that, yep, that's the one that we selected. Because there might be a few of them, it sound almost the same, but these are the clues. It was right on the top and it gave us the latest one. Month. So I'll select that. Now, the moment I select it, I have to now start giving these variables. And see, this is where it's important that you name it correctly because now I know that PA first name, this is the variable that is being asked from the Power Automate side. Power Automate needs these variables. So therefore, these are the variable types. So here, I am now gonna go ahead and match it. So my PA first name is actually the first name bar. This first name bar is actually part of the topic variable. So I'll select that. Now you guessed it, I gotta go ahead and line these up, all right? Because I got a last name, which is the PA last name bar in Power Automate. I gotta go ahead and give it the last name bar from this topic. 
Same thing, entree, I gotta go ahead and get the entree, right, selected value. Uh, side one, I'll scroll down, there's a side value. Uh, drink var, on the drink var, it's on the top. And then for the email address, well, there you go, the email var. So we're actually done with this action, but we're not done with the overall topic because it's always a good practice to go and ask the user, do you wanna submit another one, all right, another order? So for this section now, I'll click on another, um, I'll click on the add node and I'll ask another question. And in the question, this is gonna be a very simple one. So the var, I'm, I'm gonna go and rename this var to var another question, okay? And then for the topics, I'll basically say var is, do you want another one? I'll say default as no. And then I'll click on that. Another option, I'll put that in as yes. And so moment I did this, I started adding them. You saw below it, immediately all these came in. So from here onwards, now you just go and tweak it. So if the user wants no, um, then we've got to go ahead and just end it. But if the user selected yes, which means yes, I want to submit another order, then I've got to go ahead and now loop it back. So check this out. In Below the yes, I'm going to click on this plus node. And on the plus node, I'm going to go and do a topic management and I'm going to select go to step. Now, before I click on this, let's decide which step we should send it to. So we don't want to go ahead and get the first name and the last name again, okay? We've already got that, we got the email address. So I want to start it right around here before the first adaptive card, keep that in mind. So I'm going to go back now to the bottom uh, in the condition for the yes, I'm going to select um, the topic management. I'm going to say go to step. Now when I do the go to step, this section shows up in this section on the top, sorry Rob, it says select destination steps. I'm going to scroll up, scroll up. Remember I said the first adaptive card. So we're going up, going up. In fact, not the first one, the second one, because the first adaptive card, we already have the name. It's the second one. So I'm going to select here, click on that one. And now it is going and saying this is the adaptive card. So we're completely actually done on this side. I can go all the way to the bottom. And now at the bottom, I can go and say end conversation, all right? I can go and say end conversation. I can say end topics, basically end conversation. So technically the bot is completely done. So I'm going to go and click on save. And now we're going to go and test it. So let me just go to the app launch and let me open up my um, Outlook because in this example, I was just sending the email to myself, but obviously you would send it to the email address that was put in, okay? So I'll go and do this section. Um, and then now I'm going to go ahead and put in the test your bot. Uh, I'll go and reset that section. And now we're gonna actually go and do a test. So it says, hi, I'm a quick and easy you know, order bot. How can I help you? I'm gonna go and just put in one of our triggers is to put in an Order, right? Remember, order is the big trigger. So when I do this now, it says, hi, I'm your friendly neighborhood Autobot. Let me get some information from you to complete this order quickly. So let's go and put in my first name, all right? So I'm gonna go make you my full first name, there's Daniel, last name. For my email address, I'll go and put in daniel.christian at powermbps.com. Click on submit. So it goes ahead and saves that information. Now it is going to ask me, hi, Daniel, because remember this Daniel came from the variable to which the original one saved. Uh, which entree would you like? So, okay, I'll go and do again a steak. I'll go ahead and say, today I'm gonna do some vegetables with it. A drink, I'll just do some water and I'm gonna click on sub, uh, place order. Then afterwards, it is going to go ahead and ask me, uh, hey, you know, uh, uh, you know, do you want to uh, go ahead and actually, you know, do another one or no? I said, I'm gonna say uh, no, and then it'll go ahead and complete it. But if I said yes, then it would have gone all the way up to the top again. We don't wanna do that. Okay, and I can put in some friendly things and whatnot, but we'll do that. Uh, one neat thing I like is that because you've gone ahead and added the conditions pieces, it actually is going ahead and telling me which condition it selected. This is actually one of the new features in the design piece that came in, thought I'll call that out. But, but if I go back now to our actual flow, and if I go one step outside, this is the brand new flow that we just created, and see it already ran successfully. So if I go to my emails, there you go. See, that's the email that we just did. See, order submitted by Daniel Christians. Hi Daniel, your order has been submitted. Here is what you ordered, and this is the information that we put in directly inside that Power Automate flow. The entire bot process ran successfully. Wasn't that phenomenal? You and I just created the next level chatbot using Power Virtual Agents and its new Ask with Adaptive Card functionality. And for that, we use the Adaptive Card Designer, a tool that Microsoft themselves has provided, and it had two amazing templates in it. We were able to quite easily 
tweak those templates. And for once the templates was pulled in two power virtual agents, we could further go ahead and tweak it over there by now going ahead and talking and using the variables. I mean, this truly is taking your chatbot interaction with the user to a next level. And it helps you as the bot maker to be in full control of the discussion because now you can put in a form. You can put in drop down choice options, which means the user absolutely cannot make a mistake. He or she has to select the options that you're providing. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. Hopefully you start leveraging these new features and functionalities and take your bot building to the whole new level. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.